Buenos días, Español 2. Y buenas tardes y buenas noches también. I guess it depends on when you're watching this, whether it's a días, tardes y noches, right? Either way, es tiempo de vocabulario, capítulo uh, 2.1, nuevo vocabulario y gramática. In addition to all of this wonderful vocabulary and some sample sentences, we'll also be taking a look at conjugations of the verb estar. Um, that's appropriate because estar has to do with um, either current location or feelings, like more of a temporary condition, like how you're feeling or what your current state is, as opposed to conjugations of the verb ser, which also means to be, but it has to do with like origin, age, and, you know, more permanent style characters, physical characteristics and traits, as opposed to fleeting conditions like the verb estar and feelings. And, uh, that being said, I'd like to go ahead and begin with this right now, talking about how you're feeling. El primero es cansado, que significa tired, cansado. ¿Cómo estás? Simply asks the question, how are you? So we have how as in como, and then estás is the are you part. Now normally estás is you are, but since it's in the form of the question, the subject and the verb flip-flop locations, and now it's an are you instead of a you are. Same with como te sientes, which asks how are you feeling. It's a little bit more specific, conjugating the verb sentirse, which is a reflexive, which I know we haven't focused on, Normally it comes with the verb sentir, so you just think sientes is you feel, but it's actually te sientes, like you yourself feel. So it's a little bit redundant, but that's okay. Redundancy is okay in Spanish. We will play with that idea as we progress throughout the year, and you'll discover the farther you travel in your linguistic journey, you'll find that redundancy in some languages is more acceptable than in others. In Spanish it's very acceptable. There'll be lots of redundancies. Anyways, como te sientes significa how do you feel. Contento, happy. Obviously, the co the content or, or, or content would be the uh, would be the cognate for that, the related word, right? De buen humor, in a good mood. Literal translation of good humor. De mal humor, in a bad mood or of bad humor. Deprimido means depressed. Deprimido. Emocionado means excited or emotional. Emocionado. Enfadado. Angry. Enfadado. Enfermo. Sick or ill. Enfermo. Estar aburrido. To be bored. Estar aburrido. Feliz. Happy. As in feliz cumpleaños. Happy birthday. Or feliz navidad. Happy Christmas. I mean, I guess loosely translated we'd say Merry Christmas, but... In Spanish, it's Feliz Navidad. So, uh, me siento is just a conjugation of sentirse, which means I feel. Ocupado is busy. Notice the cognate occupied is in there. Preocupado significa worried. Preocupado. Looks kind of like the word preoccupied, which means to worry in a way. Tranquilo. Uh, calm or tranquil, if you will. Tranquilo. Triste is sad. Triste. La próxima. Uh, making suggestions and their responses. So one of them is buena idea. Someone says something or suggests something. Buena idea. Good idea. Here's a sentence fragment. Me gustaría, pero tengo que... Which is, I would like to, but I have to... And then you'd add some sort of infinitive afterwards. So like... Um, for example, someone asks you out uh, to go see a movie or something like that, and you'd say, me gustaría, pero tengo que limpiar mi pelo, which means, I'd like to, but I have to wash my hair. Something along those lines, okay? Por qué no? Which means, why don't? Or, why not? Okay, so like, por qué no vamos al cine? Why don't we go to the movies? Or, qué tal si? Which means, how about if? So, um, if I were to say, uh, ¿Qué tal si vienes conmigo al bibli a la biblioteca? How about if you come with me to the library? Chances are you might respond by saying, Me gustaría, pero tengo que limpiar mi pelo. Okay, continuing on. Using some of these plus previous information in some sample sentences. Um, ¿Por qué no haces un dibujo? Okay, so, ¿Por qué no? Uh, so, why don't? Haces un dibujo. You do or you make. A drawing. ¿Por qué no haces un dibujo? Why don't you do a drawing? Or why don't you make a drawing? 
¿Qué tal si vienes conmigo al aeropuerto? ¿Qué tal si? How about if? Vienes conmigo. You come with me. Al is the contraction to and the. A plus L together becomes al. Aeropuerto, que es el airport. Entonces, ¿qué tal si vienes conmigo al aeropuerto? How about if you come with me to the airport? Y la última, the very last one. Me gustaría, pero tengo que estudiar. I'd like to, but I have to study. So that's just like a, a pleasant way to respond to someone, politely telling them that, no, you can't do this thing with them because you have to study. But you can obviously use other excuses, reasons, whatever you want to call, uh, in the form of an infinitive afterwards. Me gustaría, me gustaría pero tengo que estudiar. Okay, uh, próxima cosa. Just a little bit with the verb estar very quickly. Um, aquí tenemos, and we'll make it pretty. Uh, there it is. Um, so, el verbo estar, um, the conjugation of the verb estar, pretty simple. Yo estoy, tú estás, él, ella, o usted está, nosotros estamos, vosotros estáis, ellos, ellas y ustedes están. Now, unlike ser, estar can be used for current location, like estoy en mi clase, I am in my class. Mood, like if I was feeling kind of depressed or sad, you could say, estoy triste, o estoy deprimido. Or if you were a girl, estoy triste, o estoy deprimida. Okay? Feelings, same basic idea. Emotions, same basic idea. I kind of lump all three of these things together. And PPT. Now, we haven't actually spent a lot of time with PPT. What that really stands for is present progressive tense. That's when you have the conjugation of the star plus uh, plus a gerund. An er a gerund in English would be like an ing verb. These are words like running, walking, thinking, doing, and so on. So like if I wanted to say I am studying, it would be estoy estudiando. We are learning. Estamos aprendiendo. Uh, they are running. Ellos están corriendo. And so on and so forth. So that's what we're really looking for uh, when we're talking about PPT. We spend a big unit on that a little bit later in the year. Not too difficult of a thing, it's, but, but it's something that we'll spend some time with for sure. Anyways, yo estoy, I am, tú estás, you are, él or ella está, he or she is, or usted está, you formal are, estamos, we are, estáis, you all are, uh, están, it could be either ellos están, or ellas están, or ustedes están. So we have, um, they are or you all formal are. So those are your conjugations of the verb estar, and those are some of your uses of the verb estar. That actually is your only slide for this week. So a little lighter than this here on the material, so we'll be doing a ton of practice. It allows us to sort of regroup after a big test, because I know we had that nice big test uh, that completed all of chapter one. There's a lot of review of material in there. and We're starting to continue this uh, review a little bit more. When you have questions, this video, this link gets sent out, uh, mostly via email or via Student Skyward. You can always reply via email to me to ask questions. Um, if you're learning the material in advance, let's say you were getting this on a, on a Saturday and we don't have class till Monday or Tuesday, and you're confused and you're like, I don't remember, let's see, what's the difference between estáis versus están? What's going on there? Because um, they both can mean you all are. Well, and then I can... And, and I could easily respond back something that, well, estáis is the vosotros form. Vosotros is informal. That's if you know the group of people that you're talking to very, very well. And ustedes is a more formal form of referring to you all. And uh, that would be if you're talking to the group and you say, están muy inteligentes, you're all very intelligent. But that's if you're talking to a group of like stockholders or shareholders or people in a professional business environment. So in this case, Less formal, in this case, a little more formal, if you're looking at vosotros versus usted. And I can flesh that out a little bit for you. Or you can just jot that question down on your vocab sheet, because I'll send those out to you. And you can bring them to class on Monday, too. And we could start the beginning of the week running, as opposed to discovering what needs to be fleshed out a little bit more later on in the week. Maybe we can attack that on the front end a little bit and, and hopefully help you out a little bit more. Anyways, I hope that you're enjoying learning Spanish and capitalizing on some new 
um, some new abilities and some new uh, grammar tools this year. We're going to throw a lot more at you over the next few weeks, so be prepared. Hasta luego. Ten cuidado y chao.